Well, he's looking especially screamy today. Hey! What's up, my peoples? MGO here, the freak and geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the MP52 Masterpiece Starscream Version 2. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at... The packaging right up front here, yeah, we have a lovely image of Screamer in his robot mode, in his jet mode. He is the Destron Air Commander, his name is Starscream version 2.0. Oh, on the top we have Transformers Masterpiece, on the bottom Transformers Masterpiece, words and stuff and things that I cannot read. On this side of the box we have Starscream, on this side of the box we have Starscream. On the back of the box you have your obligatory product shots, he does this and that and things and stuff. You can't see it all, there it is, things and stuff, stuff and things and more things and more stuff and that's basically it for the packaging i didn't throw it i just dropped it and we also get the collector's card with a nice piece of artwork there of screamer and on the back you have a bio that i cannot read and text specs if that interests you hooray for cards and moving right along here we have masterpiece starscream version now, um, a long time ago, seems like eons ago, I remember saying, hey, if they're going to start redoing Masterpiece figures, they should redo the Seeker mold, because that desperately, desperately needs it, because that mold has not aged well at all. And lo and behold, hooray, they finally got around to redoing the Seeker mold. So here is the new Starscream in his jet mode. And let's get in close here so we can take a look at the details. You can see some nice transparent plastic there for the cockpits, which can open up. There's a little, little purple seat in there. Quite nice, quite stylish. You close that up. The whole jet is done in gray with some red and some darker gray. You got multiple shades of gray, not 50, but multiple shades of gray. And you got the uh, red and white stripes going down the wings, Decepticon symbols. You got some nice panel lining detail on top of the actual panel lines, but some nice detail going on. You got the tail fins, you got the uh, thrusters back here. You do have his weapons underneath the wings. He does have landing gears, which do roll, which is quite nice. And we'll raise up a little bit so we can get a full look here at the top. There is the top, there is the bottom. Now, if you look up his animation model and you can uh, you can see a shot of the underside of the jet, this is actually pretty accurate to how the underside of his jet mode looked in the cartoon with this panel here and everything. That is pretty much how it looked. Um, the only thing that's not really accurate is just this little blue part sticking out. But yeah, for the most part, the underside of the jet is, is accurate to his animation model. Like it or not, it's accurate, so hey. It is what it is. I don't have a problem with it. I don't care. I don't care one bit. But for the people that I know are going to complain about it, it is accurate to the animation model. It's probably not going to change your mind at all. But hey, to each their own, I don't have a problem with it. If you do, well, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, well. But yes, he does have those landing gears, which do roll. So he can roll as flying things should. Hooray for rolling flying things. And for comparison, here he is with the... Make toys, Star Scream, and here he is with G1 Star Scream because he's precious. Oh, so precious. Okay. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is with the previous masterpiece Star Scream. So you can see how that works out. Now the previous one is a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, has a little bit more of a uh, wingspan going on there. But that is how those two size up with one another, so there you go. Now as far as features in jet mode, again, the cockpit can open. Um, you can also open up the uh, nose cone to reveal some nice details in there. Nice paintwork as well. And you have these panels here on the wings, which can rotate up or down a little bit. Uh, the thrusters do have some wiggly waggly side to side. You can open up these panels as well if you need to. And uh, yeah, there you have that. Now, as far as accessories go, uh, you get 
a pair of effects parts here done in a trans clearance purple. And you get two of these. And what these are for is you can take these and plug these onto the thrusters like so. And he can bloosh, he can bloosh, bloosh away, bloosh away, high away, fly away, bye bye. So you can do all of that if you want to. Um, you do also get a, uh, a little Megatron in gun mode. It is very nicely done. No Decepticon symbol and everything. Let's get a little Megs in his gun mode. And you can, if you want to, you can take this, you can use a tab on either side here, and there's a slot right here in the center. And you can take this and plug that right underneath Starscream, like so. That did happen on the show, so you can do that if you want to. Things you can do if you want to do it. Why not? Dare I say, why not? And you also get a display stand here. Oh, nice and purpley. And this is just a recolor of the stand that came with uh, Dinobots. And you take this little clear piece here, and this will plug into these two slots here. So just take it, and it will snap into place, let's get it snapped in. A little hard to get it snapped in, but it snaps in. Come on, oh, there we go. Snaps in nice and secure, and just plug it right there. And you can adjust this arm to have it sitting as high as you want. But there you go, you got Screamer on the stand. You can even have it pivoting from side to side if you want. Get some little action-y poses going on. Hey, totally up to you what you want to do. Have it angled down, have it angled up. Do what you want. Sometimes it gets a little loose, but you can just tighten that screw there. But yeah, there is Screamer on the flight stand. He has a bunch of other accessories, but those are for the robot mode. So we'll get to those when we, uh, when we get to robot mode. So that is basically it for the jet mode, and I personally think it looks quite good. But let's get down to transformation, shall we? <laughs> get back here, man. Get back, get back here. Okay, so here's the thing. He has he has the girl walk mode. Should I show the girl walk mode? I genuinely don't care about the girl walk mode. I really don't. I just find it pointless, but it <sighs> I'll show the girl walk mode. I'll show. I'll show it. I'll show it. Alright, so uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to flip in the landing gear. So open up these panels here and just flip these in. Close all this up. And then just open up this panel, flip that in. There you go. And what do we need to do here? So we need to untab the weapons from the wings. And untap the weapons from the wings, get those out of the way. Uh, you want to come here to the uh, tail fins. And they just sit on a little tab here, so just pull them out, just free them up. And this section here will tab into the main body, so just pop this up like that. Pop it up, and that will allow you to bring his legs down. And then you split the legs. And what we're going to do here is there's a tab that goes up into this section here. So you kind of want to pull this down first and then you can open all of this up. Then you want to bring his foot down and we'll thoop into place. It's a strong thoop. Come on. Boom. Thoop into place. The thruster, you want to push up. This panel here, you swing forward. And what you're going to do here is you're just going to close this back up. Tab that back in, and then just rotate this tail fin up like so. And you want to extend the leg, and how you're going to do that is you're basically just going to take this whole section of the leg and just bend it upward. And that will get it started, and then you just pull it, and it will extend the leg like that. There you have the one side. Second of us is just like the first, so just untap this, bring it up, bring down the foot, loop that into place, compress that thruster, bring this panel forward, now you can close this back up, flip this up, and then just extend the leg, like so. And there we go, and you can bring these hip panels forward, so we can bring his legs forward. And you would think that would be the gist of it, but no, that's not the gist of it, we're not done yet, we gotta do a little bit more to get him ready. So the wings, you bring up, like that, 
the tail fin you're going to bring over rotate it all the way around like so this is on a slider so you compress this down and then bring it over like so and then we can bring all of this down like that then you bring this up and this will tab into this smaller slot right here in the tail fin so just line that up plug it in plug it in there you go and same thing on the other side just bring that over rotate this slide that down bring it over bring it all down plug the weapon in and there you go that that's the girl walk mode that's it right there yeah amazing <laughs> It's a thing you can do if you want to do it. I personally don't care one bit about this mode, but hey, if you want some girl walk, you got some girl walk. But now let's get down to the real deal here. Let's get down to robot mode. So we'll finish up transforming his legs. So we need to open this back up. Like so, bring the tail fin up. You're going to rotate this section around like that. And this section of the tail fin here is on a slider. So you're gonna pop that forward and you're gonna rotate it. I always forget which way to rotate it. No, you're rotating it this way. I always forget which way to do it. So you rotate that tail fin around, that piece of the tail fin, then you rotate the whole thing around like so, and all of this will just go right into the leg. And then just tap it all back together. And then you're gonna take his knee piece here and that will just slide up like so. And there you go. So now the leg is complete. Same thing again, just open it up. Just bring that up so you can rotate this around and then bring it up swing it around again i always do it the wrong way why 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 i don't know i just do so <laughs> swing that around collapse that up put that together slide up the knee boop, and there you go so his legs are all done now his legs are complete there you go. So now we need to uh, we need to undo this stuff that we did here. So bring this around, slide this back up, and rotate this back around. Just get stuff out of the way. Bring the ring back down. Again, just undo all this. All this hard work we just did. It really wasn't that hard, but still, it's just kind of annoying. I don't like backtracking. But <laughs> bring that up. And rotate that around, and there we go. Okay, so now we are here. Here's where we are living now. So what we're going to do now is, uh, first I need to raise up the camera a little bit. That's what I need to do. Not what you need to do, but what I need to do. Okay, so we're gonna split all of this. It did it for me, but split all of this and rotate it up and swing all of this up. Take the central panel right here that will untab from this whole cockpit section here. There's his face, hello! And his little butt plate here. His little butt plate is on a double joint and you just bring that back like so. Then you collapse this down, bring this up. There are tabs and slots. And you just compress that up like that. Once you do that, uh, you want to kind of angle these down to make room for this hinge here because now we're going to swing his arms out. So swing the arm out and then you can bring it down at this joint right here and that will get it out of the way. Do the same thing on the other side, just kind of angle that, get that out of the way, swing that forward and then swing it down like so just to get those arms out of the way for now. And now we have is noggin to deal with. So what you're gonna do with his noggin, um, the sides of his head are spring-loaded, so you just kinda wanna grab his head. We need to basically just kinda bring it up and get it out of the way. So just kinda get up under here, and there we go. The next on multiple hinges here. So just get the head up and out of the way, because that will give you the clearance to now bring these panels up. And then you wanna have this whole section straight so you have the clearance to take these panels and swing them out like so. So that's how you want that going. 
Same thing, so just bring that up and swing that panel out. Okay, make sure everything's straight. Swing that around. There you go. So now you got the sides of his waist. Uh, once you do that, we basically have to put his head back where it was. So compress the sides of his head and then just bring all of this down and just sit it back in between that hinge where it was before. So now that we have done that, it kind of looks like a mess right now, but it's all going to come together. It is all going to come together. So at this point now, um, we can take the nose cone, this whole nose cone section, and just swing it around, swing it to the back like so. And now we got to do some work. That's, that's an awkward thing going on right there. But now we're going to do all of this right here. So one thing we need to do is we need to take this nose cone section, not, not this section, not this. We're going to be rotating at this seam right here. So all this is going to rotate. Now this hinge is very tight on mine. Now, when I did the, the transformation video, the JTI, um, I did say don't use the nose cone as leverage because I ended up just bringing this out and using that as leverage. I do not recommend that. I did that because I was being impatient and I'm being impatient now, so I'm gonna do it, but don't do it. Don't do that because you can risk snapping that hinge. <laughs> Don't be impatient like me. I'm just trying to get through it. So there you go. You want to rotate it down so you can see that that slot is now exposed. And you can bring this dip of the nose cone and that will collapse in like that. Once you have done that, you then want to open up all of this and this will separate like so. Then you take the seat, fold that in. This will then rotate, rotate downward like so these panels here you fold down and then all of this will just whoop, compress down like that once you have done that you want to take all of this you can see this big double hinge right here just kind of wiggle all this up into the body like so and make sure everything is sitting as it should and all that will tuck in you can see how all that in there ends up sitting flush right there and that just pops his head up through that opening right there like that and once you've done that this panel here will tab in right there like that there we go now we can kind of straighten his legs out and now we are going places peoples now we are going places okay so now we can work on the wings here so uh what we're going to do here is we are going to raise up a little bit more. We're going to rotate the wings at this hinge right here. So rotate all this forward like that. This little bit here will just swing around to the other side. And then you wanna bring the wing out at this hinge here. So it is sitting like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the wing Fully, and you can even see some nice molded detail in there. Even some of it picked out in paints. Pretty cool. And these panels here will just fold down, fold down. We take the tail fin, we bring this down, rotate it around, and this will sit in the wing. And then we close up the wing, and this tab will go into this longer slot right here. Boom. That's how that works. And that's pretty clever. I like that. That's a nice little bit of transformation there. And you also want to take this section here that will just fold up and under like that. And second vest, guess what? Just like the vest. So just swing this out, swing this over to the other side, swing the wing out, open the wing up, fold these little panels in, and then bring the tail fin down. It's on a double hinge, so you use both hinges. Rotate that around, that will sit in the wing. Tab that into the wing, like so, and there you go. Now, this bit right here, you just rotate. This will come down and just sit on his back like that. And now, you want to take this whole armature here, and all of this will just tab into multiple points. You got a tab that will go in there, and then this will tab into the back of this. So just get all that nice and compressed, push it in, and that will all tab in right there. Same thing on the other side. Just compress all that, get it all lined up, tab it all in, and there you go. There you guys backpack, whoops, I forgot to do. I forgot, I forgot to do that. 
Put that up. There we go. Now we do that. There we go. And there you have his back all situated. And now we can get back to his front. Yay! Okay, so now what we are going to do here is we're going to get his arms all set up. So we're starting, where are we starting? So we're starting in this position here. So what we're doing is we are swinging this section out. This section holding the uh, null ray will rotate around like that. Then this will swing around like so. Let me get this out of the way so you can see what's happening. So that will swing up like that. And then you will bring this section up and this will end up clipping over this right here. So once you get it there, just give it a little push and that will tab into place and you can bring up the rest of his arm and then we can finally bring his shoulder back rotate it down and at this point we can open this panel up flip out his hand close it back up rotate the hand around and we also have to transform his null rays yes they do transform as well you can open this panel up take this section take the tip just flip it around like so close it back up and just collapse that down. And there you have an arm all done. Guess what? We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So just bring this out. Rotate this. And swing this around. Bring it over. Tab that into place. Bring it up. Rotate. Down. Open. Flip. Flop. Close. And open. Open. Flip, glares, oops, do not unpeg, that's not a step, and just collapse that down, and we are pretty much at the home stretch here. One more thing we must do, one more little step. We are going to take these sections right here, they're on double hinge, just bring it back, and this will just kind of thoop over this hinge right here, and... There's a little tab, it's gonna go into that notch right there to secure that in place. And there you go, and then you just kind of angle it up like that. And we do the same thing with the other one, just bring it back, soup it into place, give it that good soupage, all the good soupage, and then that will go into that notch. And there you go, angle them up. And there you go, we are done! That was a journey, that was an adventure, but there you have Masterpiece Starscream in his robot mode. And he looks great, I love him, I absolutely love him. The transformation is quite involved, but when it's all said and done, um, you get a Starscream that looks like he just jumped right off the screen, and um, I'm in love with him. I am definitely in love with this guy. But let's get in close here so we can take a look, not at his chest, but at his noggin. Oh, there's my noggin. But yes, nice, nice head sculpt. Some nice red there for the eyes. And it seems like they did tweak the face sculpt because the face sculpt looked a lot different in the uh, promo pictures. And actually, let me bring in the box because they use those pictures for the box. And you can see here, like that face, you can see the mouth almost went like all the way across his face and it just looked kind of weird. And yeah, they definitely, they, they definitely fixed the face sculpt. So that, that makes me happy because that face sculpt did look kind of weird. <laughs> so very, very happy that they, uh, they did some tweaks to that. It looks a lot better, a lot more, uh, a lot more accurate. But going down the body, you can see again a nice transparent plastic there. Yes, it's is a faux cockpit chest. I don't care. I know that's going to enrage some people. Oh, for how much a bird? Hey, it makes it look good. It makes it look accurate. So hey, I'm here for it. I'm a fan. I don't care. Never has bothered me. Never will. Um, but hey, to each their own. So you have this nice red diaper. <laughs> But you got the null rays there. Looking quite good. You got the blue there in the shins. His big old feet. His thruster heels. Move up the back. I like how everything comes together in the back. Yeah, I mean, he has a backpack, but it all comes together nice and cohesively. In my opinion, anyway. Looks good. Looks good. I got no real issues as far as I'm concerned. And now, articulation wise, oh, the head is on a ball joint, so you got your wiggly waggly. He can look totally, he can look all the way up. Squirrel! He can totally. 
do all kinds of that. Uh, he can look down a little bit and can rotate and do a full 360. You can play with the sides of his head, do that if you want. Arms can rotate, they're on a soft ratchet. You can do a full 360, but the wings kind of get in the way. Uh, the arms can move in and out. At this joint, you can also use this joint. So you have two joints here at the shoulder to work with. And another quick note about his shoulders is you can use this hinge as well. So you can bring his arms forward in front of his chest. Moving on down, you got bicep rotation. You have a single jointed elbow, but you get a nice range of movements out of it. Um, as far as the wrists go, you do have rotation. You also have a hinge that allows the hand to move in and out. You have posable hands which we can open up. Uh, the thumb is on a hinge at the base and a hinge there. And each finger is on a hinge at the base and a hinge there. And yes, he does have individual fingers. They're all separate pieces. So you got nice posable hands right there. Um, as far as the waist, uh, there's no waist rotation. He does have an ab crunch that you can engage. So at least you got something at the waist. You got some crunch, no rotation, but you got some crunchage going on there. Um, these panels you can move out of the way to accommodate the leg movement. Legs! Okay, move forward that far. Back only about that far before the backpack gets in the way. Outward! He can do the full splits, and that's on a uh, softer ratchet. Uh, you do have thigh rotation. You have nice deep knee bend there. And the feet, uh, they can move up, they can move down a little bit, and you do have some ankle tiltage. Um, you can also Move the heel, that's on its own hinge, so I can move back if you needed to, and you can move that panel out of the way of it as well. So, they have that. Now, one issue with this figure, and you might have just seen it, is that his feet, the hinge that his feet are on, are, um, they're loose on both sides. They're loose. So, if you have his legs, like, perfectly straight, like, perfectly aligned, if he has his legs perfectly aligned with his body, as you would think they should be, um, he just kind of wants to lean forward. And he's kind of doing the, <laughs> kind of doing the Michael Jackson smooth criminal lean there. I am a smooth criminal. I apologize for nothing, nothing. But anyway, yeah, um, the feet are loose. Now there's two ways you can go about dealing with that. One involves some work. One involves really no work whatsoever. Um, you could totally, you know, you could you can get in there with some nail polish, some floor polish, get in there, tighten that joint up. That's one way to go about it. Or if you don't want to do that, you just take his legs and you bring them back. Just one click, one click, and voila, there you go. He stands just fine. And it doesn't really mess with his stance all that much. His legs are just only very slightly angled back, which is kind of how they stood in the cartoon anyway. So it kind of gives them a little bit more of a dynamic stance. But whatever you want to do there, so now let's run through the accessories. So again, we have the Megatron gun. We already showed this off, but you can, if you want to, store that on his back if you wish, but you can also obviously have him wielding Lord Megatron. And you want to take the, uh, the handle here and it will just extend down like that. And you just tab it into his hand like so. Wrap his fingers around it. There you go. He can fire. He can fire Megatron. Kill some Autobots. There you go. You do also get some more effects parts. Yes, you do. You get some blushes. You get uh, this one right here. Done in purple. You get this one right here. Also done in purple. They're all done in purple. And you also get this one right here. Getting all done in that transparent purple plastic. You can plug all of these onto Megatron if you want to. So you can have various blushing options. You can have that kind of blush. You can have that kind of blush. Or you can have this kind of blush. Totally up to you what you want to do there. And you can plug these onto the null rays as well. You can plug that on there. Have that going on. Or have that going on or have that going on, they all plug in, and you can just get all this angled just right, and you can do a big old double screamer. Blue! 
Bloosh! It's a screaming Megs Bloosh. Oh, it's a screaming Megs Bloosh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Another thing you can do if you want to is you can remove the, uh, the null race here. You can just tuck that up, bring down the handle, and you can hold these as a handheld weapon if you wish. Hey, thing you can do if you want to do it. You have the option, and as always, options are good. Now, as far as the thruster effects parts go, you can use these in robot mode, obviously, um, but you do want to extend the thruster because as you can see when it's compressed, uh, that rivet is right there and that's totally in the way. So you do have to extend the thruster. So you have the port available to you and you can plug those in and he can bloosh, bloosh away. And Screamer does also have some hand options. So we need to uh, rotate his hand, open this up and flip his hand back in. And that will expose this little tab here, and we can bring in this piece, little drill, and this will just tab right in, like so. And he's got a little drill going on, if you wish, or you can give him the claw! Oh, you're scared of the claw. You're scared of the claw. You can put a little claw in his hand, like so, or replace his hand with the claw, rather. Like that, and you can give him a little meteorite shard, and I believe this is from the Cosmic Rust episode, where he yanks this out of Megatron's chest, and get that going on. So hey, all things you can do if you want to do it. Another feature involves his chestial region, because he's got missile nips. That's right, he's got some missile nips. Done in purple. Some dark gray in there, you even got some detail up here as well. Done in the light gray. So yeah, missile nips. You need some missile nips. And the last accessories that are included are a bunch of optional faces. So the one that is on him right now is just, you know, just a regular serious face, but you can just kind of get up under his chin here. Pop his face off, ah, that's always so disturbing. So, so disturbing but we can replace it with this face. And this just gives him, let's see, a little bit of a grin, a little bit of a screamy grin. He's plotting something. He's got something up his sleeve. You know how Screamer does. So you got that, or you can give him this face, which is just him, just pure joy, pure joyful star scream. Ah, you can do that if you want to. Have them all laughing, all laughing and screaming, all screaming and laughing. Um, you can give him this. I think this is my favorite face, honestly. If I can get it popped in. There we go. He just has that evil, evil smirk that just says, Oh, how it pains me to do this. Oh, I love that one. I love that one so much. That's my favorite one. That's my, I'm probably going to display him with this face. Uh, we also get this one right here, which is just like, ah, kind of like angry scream. Angry scream. You can get that. I'm just kind of shouting. Or the last face right here, which is like, oh, my foot. I don't know. Or maybe this one. Maybe this one's, oh, my foot. Either one. I think you can use either one. But there you go. You can make Starscream very expressive. You have the option, and as always, options are good. And of course, if you want to, you can use the display stand in robot mode as well. Although I do wish that this part could extend because really, once you have this plugged onto his back, like it's not really, you know, you can't really get flying poses out of him because it's just holding them like right there on the base, so. I wish this could extend so you can actually get some good little flying poses out of him or something. I mean, you kind of can, but he's like a couple inches off the ground. It's not all that impressive, but you know, you can do it if you want to do it. So there you have that. And now for comparison. Here he is with the Make Toys Starscream. And here he is with G1 Starscream because he's precious. Oh, so precious. And here he is with Masterpiece Megs. 
and see how they look together. And they look quite good together. And lastly, but not leastly, here he is with the previous masterpiece, Starscream. So you can see how that works out. And in my opinion, this was definitely an upgrade. And that's just me to each their own. And I'm not saying that this was a bad figure. This is not a bad figure. Not a bad figure at all. It just, it just hasn't aged well. It's definitely a, a figure of its time. Not a bad figure, but like I said, it just, it just hasn't aged well. So... There you go. So there you have Masterpiece Starscream version 2. And I am really, really pleased with this figure. Absolutely love him. Um, he just looks like he jumped right off the screen. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with him. Um, the jet mode looks good. I mean, in this instance, some robot under the jet is actually accurate. So it works. Um, the robot mode looks amazing. Again, looks like he just jumped right off the screen. So I am super happy with the way the robot mode turned out on um, the transformation. It's, it's involved. There's a lot going on, but it all works well. It all works pretty smoothly. Um, the only thing I would say exercise some caution with is just that nose cone turn. Just be careful with that. That, that joint is kind of tight. So just be careful and don't be like me. Don't use a nose cone for leverage. <laughs> just get a good solid grip on it and, and turn it. But that's the only thing I can really say, you know, exercise some caution with, um, you know, the feet being loose is an issue definitely, but there are ways to go about that. If you want to, uh, you know, if you want to fix that, um, just use the typical tightening methods or just bring his legs back one click and voila, not a problem. But, you know, up to you what you want to do there. But as far as I'm concerned, this is the update that I have been wanting so very much and I am very, very pleased with it. So there you go. Now, if you would like this or any other Masterpiece figures, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There'll be a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also check out my Masterpiece playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out M Games, check out Love Peace Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the MP52 Masterpiece Starscream version 2. And this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Big Geek, be proud. Boom in your face! So what's our evil plan for today, Lord Megatron? Uh, I don't know, but something that involves you double-crossing me at some point, I'm sure. <gasps> you know what? I take offense to that. No, really. Yes, really. I mean, look, just because I've tried to kill you countless times doesn't mean we can't be the best of friends our relationship is contentious at best starscream so that means no invites for thanksgiving no christmas no hanukkah no arbor day no i'm starting to get the feeling you don't like me too much gee whatever gave you that idea just a hunch i have an intuition